When you go in there, you have a job to do, a promise to the fans that spent their money, time, energy, love, effort to watch you, to go to that show, to cheer, uh, to, to make you feel like you have a purpose because that's the one thing, like I say, having a purpose in wrestling. Sometimes the purpose was to be a big star and uh, I always say The Rock and I traded places in a sense. Where I was 18 years old, third generation, there's only three of us. It was me, Randy Orton, The Rock, Harry Smith was a little bit too young at that time, but... And uh, I gave up my life because I didn't like I didn't like wrestling enough. The other part of it, the travel, the hotel, the uh, the lonely. As Brett says, walking to the hotel by yourself, lonely. There's no team. There's no camaraderie at the time. It was very competitive. I'm 160 pounds walking into a room with a bunch of really really big monsters. I'd never I'd never been to a bar really. I'd never ridden a jet ski. I'd never gone on. I'd never gone anywhere and all of a sudden I have responsibility where uh, Brett is beaten up and knocked down and basically worn out and that's the guy I'm looking at to see of what what did it do to you? What did that car look like after that race? Right. And Sabu was another guy and certain and you see these guys and uh, they may say they had a lot more fun now but at the time and place it looked like they were beaten up, worn out, uh, potentially underpaid for what they how much work they did compared to basketball soccer hockey football baseball uh, and it didn't look like it was worth it because there was no guys going into the movies then you look at what the rock did with his opportunity and he took over the world and it, it does show you uh, and I look back and I sometimes wish uh, I would have done more when I was 18 years old with the WWE offer but it was uh, well, it was uh, well do you feel like that what did you would have excelled more if perhaps somebody would have took you under their wing. Imagine or you would have being had a there a figure. year before in the back at a show, and it's Brett, Davey, Brian Pillman, Jim Neidhart, uh, Owen, if I didn't say I think it was five of them. And then they had Rick Rude, who was very good mm -hmm. friends. Perfect was around at that time, too, which is another one of Brett's boys. Shawn Michaels was running around playing with Blade. Kevin Nash was friends with Brett. Like, they're all friends. And then all of a sudden, it switched, and... Uh, maybe it was two years before or whatever, but you imagine they were all best friends, all hanging out, all working together. Uh, Stone Cold was just being kind of brought in. The Rock was, I think, just being brought in. So, I mean, the potential was there, and uh, it was such a cool atmosphere to come in when I came in, which was really weird. Brett had just had just hit Vince, and uh, Owen was unsure of his job, and Brett was very mad that Owen stayed Davey Boy was loyal enough to go, killed his career. WCW was never the same right. after that. Neidhart was finally getting a push. Uh, it seemed like in getting appreciated. I mean, Neidhart was always a great character. Uh, his wrestling uh, technical ability and stuff like that was was maybe not up to what Brett's was or Owen's was or Brian Pillman's or Davey's, but it didn't need to be because that wasn't exactly what he was there for. He was there for more of the character and the charisma and just that it factor, plus his reputation in the back of being crazy made made him a, a real-life character that was for, for what fans had known back then. He was a very serious weightlifter, very strong shot putter, and... Uh, a party animal in a great way the boys loved him so having all those characters in there and again I go back to my favorite wrestler in the world Shawn Michaels I was praying that Brett would have passed the torch as my knee Brett's in the wheelchair at the time cutting the promo where he comes back after but I have this new guy that's coming up that's a combination of Rey Mysterio Jr. Shawn Michaels Chris Benoit myself and then focus on all the stuff I was doing which at the time I give Will Offspray and Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet has been around since I've been around, and people forget that, how he's one of the true masters and inventors. Greatest, in uh, my opinion now, is the greatest wrestler possibly ever, uh, just based on what he keeps doing and how long he's been going for. But at that time, Shawn Michaels uh, is still my number one guy who did the most and lasted the longest in a pretty stiff ring with the craziest travel schedule, and you never knew what Shawn was going to do. He always was in great shape, always had cool gear, always had great matches.